my lovely, lovely imps, it is time. First, Merry Impmas! For those of you who are watching live, you all got to see me decorate this beautiful Impmas tree. But for those of you who are watching on YouTube, hello and thank you. Please don't forget to like the video. We are about to dive in to a whole bunch of new Holy Mackerel episodes. And by new, I mean they came out a while ago, but we haven't seen them yet, okay? For those of you who are like, Holy Mackerel, what are you talking about? I have a Holy Mackerel Megasode, okay? It is the a massive episode that will catch you up, and I promise you, you should go watch it right now, okay? We have a whole playlist. Just go to the Demon Mama channel and search Holy Mac and watch the mega episode, okay? I promise it's worth it. It's the funniest thing you'll ever see, okay? Holy Mackerel is the Christian sketch comedy show that this channel, and as far as I know, my channel and, and friends of my channel are basically the only people who have ever reacted to this show. It is literally our, our community's discovery, okay? And I'm telling you, it is wonderful. It is a beautiful, wonderful, and amazing thing. And we have new episodes to watch. And not only are they new episodes, but these might be the last episodes of Holy Mackerel ever made because Holy Mackerel is made by a number of people from the editing team, it seems, of a very strange Christian conservative cult, and that Christian conservative cult is dying. Um, it has completely fallen apart. There was uh, a massive falling out between members of the church and the cult leader and other leadership. Uh, there was a mass staff walkout, and their videos are getting no views anymore because the guy who founded it is no longer there and he was the only person that anybody was there for. Um, which means these might be the last episodes of Holy Mac that we ever get to see made by the original people. However, I, Demon Mama, am in the process of attempting to purchase the rights to Holy Mackerel so that I can archive and ensure that our lovely fish gets preserved into the future. Because while the group that made this fish, car this fish show that we love so much is certainly very questionable in their morals, this particular show is a piece of history that I believe deserves to be remembered regardless. And that's what I'm trying to do. So let's all hope. Let's, let's toss a slap. Let's clap our fins and let's hope that I am lucky in that pursuit. But without any further ado, all of us here together are going to enjoy the remaining episodes of Holy Mackerel, starting with the episode that longtime viewers of my show have been waiting for, the Star Wars episode. Now, if you've been watching Holy Mackerel with me for a long time, which I know a lot of you have been, the Star Wars episode has been teased for literal years. They have made jokes about an upcoming Star Wars episode since like season two or three. And we are on season eight. They've been joking about eventually doing a Star Wars one. And guess what? It's finally time, everybody. Without any further ado, we are going to watch Broccoli Wars, the Holy Mackerel Broccoli Wars. Remember the One Punch Man episode? It was called One Slap Mac. I mean, One Smack Mac. No! No! Our, bo our boy bought 
a scam chair. No! Of course he bought a scam chair. Oh. CM77, what are you doing here? How'd you even get in? Sorry, I don't speak droid. All right, mister, let's see what you're all in a fuss about. No! He's gonna go, he's gonna plug into the internet and immediately go to Fur Affinity! Okay, let's see what you have to say. The broccoli. Ow! Ah! Ow! Ah! What was that sound? Why does it hurt? What is this typing sound? It's ear piercing. Really? Is this what you're rambling on about? You crazy? Is that a head of broccoli? In space? Huh. Looks kind of like it's from that spacecraft game. Hmm. Broccoli mackerel? Oh no. Is this his new hobby? This. Oh no. Oh no. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Hey, Charlie, what's up? Monica, you'll never get. Monica the Gamer! You gotta consult her. She's overcome video game addictions. Quick, before it gets too out of control! Guess what? The Holy Mackerel is playing video games for this week's hobby. Oh, that's fun. No, no, that is not good. Oh? Think about it. Did you see him today? No, no you didn't. Probably because he's just home playing video games. That's weird. Because three years ago, Holy Macro helped me curb my addiction to video games. And that oh! That's not all. I think he built this broccoli structure and spacecraft. Maybe he's promoting Meatless Fridays. Yeah, sure. But he normally does that with fish. Monica, think about it. Four years ago, what did he replace your steak with? <sighs> a fish. Yeah. This is not a character for Holy Mac. Okay, wait a second. He's replaced he's replaced all of their meals with fish way more recent than four years ago. Are they just throwing back to all of the times that they referenced the future Star Wars episode? Is that what they're doing? Damn, this is a giga brain play. So I kind of think maybe we should help him. Okay, how do we do that? Well, there's probably no way to find him except in spacecraft. Well, I owe one for Holy Mackerel, so I'll help. But I've never played spacecraft, so I'll need to start from scratch. Okay, sounds good, but uh, we're gonna need some help, so I'm gonna call the boys. Oh, I know someone. I'll see if he can help. Nice. Oh, we know who it's gonna be. Remember when she met the legend? Drago? All right, bye. See you on spacecraft soon. Oh, I called it! I fucking called it! I knew it! I knew it! It's Drago! I am, I am the lord of this lore. No one can challenge me. Drago, 653. <laughs> well, not much. What's going on? Well, you know Holy Mackerel, right? Yeah, I do. Well, he needs our help. Because he's been playing spacecraft all day. And he's building a giant broccoli. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me that Holy Macro has picked up spacecraft? He hasn't been known exactly for his restraint. So you're gonna help? A bunch of us from Church Millington are going to find him in the game and convince him to quit. Ah, uh, I haven't played spacecraft for almost a decade. I sunk way too many hours in the game back in the day. Plus, I don't think I'd be fool enough to take on Holy Mackerel, do you? Come on, you know what we're up against. We could really use a good gamer like you. Sorry, you'll have to count me out, but actually- So he's, this is gonna be the Han Solo character. He's, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's out of the game. But they wanna get him back in. Oh man, Gayfesh. 
Alrighty then. Later, John. All y'all, report. Why, why is holy cow there they brought holy cow back remember they brought him back they undid the dead the the holy cow being dead timeline they brought him back Ryan breeze standing by shane mcclain standing by hulk hogan standing by noob destroyer standing by so we're helping holy mackerel uh yeah by preventing him from becoming a gamer yes what game are we playing? Um, Spacecraft? Alex, did you download the game? I have to download it? Yes, Alex, you do, okay? Um, just, just start downloading now and join when you can, okay? For the rest of us, uh, head to these coordinates provided by CM77. Headed there now. Huh? These coordinates are leading us to a small green moon. That's no moon. Ah! Oh, I get it. Okay. We got five minutes left in the Star Wars episode. I feel like we might be getting trolled. That's a space broccoli. It's too big to be a broccoli. This is actually crazy as a follow-up to the to the last episode, the D and D one, and the one before that, No Day to Dine, which was the James Bond parody where they had a custom music intro. But we must have faith. You never know when they're going to throw us for a loop. There have been so many episodes that started out really boring, but ended up getting better as time went on. Stay strong in the faith! I have a bad feeling about this. Apocalypse. Everyone? His cheese stick turned into broccoli! Ah yes! I love it! Okay, this is starting to this is starting to happen. It's starting to work for me. I love it. Okay, listen, one thing they've always done well, they've always done well with the attention to detail. And the fact that his cheese stick also turned into broccoli and that he hasn't even noticed it yet is based. It was his LaCroix that turned into broccoli! Kitchen, check all your food, quick! There. Man, Charlie's Charlie's basement looks grim. I'm not gonna lie. J JP is in like a actual like like killer looking spot. He's got like this this stylish studio apartment, and Charlie is like in a in a dirty basement with a pipe sticking out of the floor. What is going on? Everything's been turned to broccoli. Even my non-meat foods, it, it's all broccoli. Everything's broccoli. I haven't even downloaded the game yet and all my food is broccoli. This is not something Holy Mackerel would do. Agreed. There is a mystery to be solved here. But first, we have to destroy that space broccoli if we want to return our food back to its normal state. Charlie, how do you know that would work? Easy. Movie logic. That yeah, makes sense. Anyways... I've analyzed the data on- He's right! He's right! It's true, it would work because of movie logic! BANGER! He's just correct! He's simply correct! It doesn't matter, you plot hole seeking fucks! CM77 about the space broccoli, and it has a weak point only two pixels wide. A precise hit will destroy the broccoli. That's impossible, even with an aimbot. It's not impossible. I used a 360 no-scope targets across the entire render distance on my Fork Knight account. Bam! Oh, uh, God. <laughs> B -b -b Bazinga. Guys, 
We have company. Who is that? <laughs> what is this? That's the song they chose to be the knockoff Darth Vader theme, the, the knockoff Imperial March? Cool. He's on my six. Alex, I'm barely dodging these attacks. We could really use your help about now. Almost there. Alex, I can't do this much longer. Almost there. Drago657, he's coming in. He's coming in. You know it. He's gonna come in like fucking Han Solo. Alex! Ah! All done. I'm in. Oh wait, negative. Now it's installing. Mac! Before you blow me up, do you remember when I was spending way too much time playing video games? I was falling asleep at work from staying up way too late. Remember? You sent me to Vega Market to get caffeine. Then, you later showed me that I ought to think about how much time I should spend with God. Remember? You helped me! <laughs> Don't you remember, Mac? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cry! Hey guys, I kind of feel like we should all go do a holy hour. And then we can go tell people about Meatless Fridays. Hey, the night's still young. That sounds like a good idea, guys. Let's do that. What do you say, Holy Miracle? 80% of the episode was fixating on this guy's loading bar going up and he just cancels it. <laughs> That's such a power move. I gotta go check out my food. Whoa. We must rebuild the space broccoli, for it is the ultimate edifying power in the universe. What? You can't quit? It is- Who- Who are you people? It is your destiny to turn to the broccoli side. With you in my right hand, we can evangelize the world with broccoli. But, but, this is a delicious alternative on Meatless Fridays. Broccoli is the greater sacrifice. Raw broccoli, bro. Raw broccoli. Hey. Hey, Charlie. What you up to? Eating a broccoli breakfast? It's the only thing I have in my kitchen. What do you mean? Did, did your food not turn back to normal? No. Wait. Did yours? Yeah, I, uh, I made myself a <laughs> breakfast omelet and some bacon. What kind of stupid space broccoli doesn't turn all the food back to normal when you destroy it? <laughs> yeah, no logic in that, is there? Well, I'm gonna come over and, uh, eat all your food, okay? Uh, wait, no. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, all right. That episode was incredibly lazy following up the No Day to Dine episode. However, the joke writing was good. I, I actually love 
that he call, he cites movie logic and then he's the only guy who doesn't get his food back, okay? There's a lot of good jokes in that episode, okay? I I love it, okay? That was not that was no no day to dine. No day to dine might be the best holy mackerel episode ever made. No, I don't think it can I don't know if it can outdo Philly Cheese Mistake or Way of the Mackerel, but it is pretty close. They went they really went there with No Day to Dine. But guess what? We have another episode. That's right. It's not. No, it's not. This is not a one smack Mac night. This is at least a two smack Mac night. This is at least a two smack Mac night because we got mackerel memories, everybody. The season conclusion of season eight. Season conclusion, mackerel memories. Let's do it. Ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba -bum. Damn, when did Holy Mac get such a nice office? And he's got a he's got a fucking Dr. Pepper uh What's it what is what are these things called? I don't remember what these things are called right now. I'm blanking on it. Whatever those are. Coaster, thank you. I don't know why I was blanking on that word. Coaster. I kept thinking koozie, but that's like the thing that goes around your beer. Oh Jesus, the la the audio levels are way loud. Boys, do you want to hear the story about Holy Mackerel? No thanks, Grandpa. Oh no. The children are too lost in their video games and iPads to care about Holy Mackerel anymore. Are you sure? We're a little busy. Okay, what the what the hell is this guy's house? This guy's house has the most deranged vibes, okay? I why is there there's a swordfish on the roof that has all it's like been it's got the paint stripped off of it for some reason? It's like a a a a, a damaged severely damaged swordfish. He's got a picture of two bears boxing each other. And for some reason, he's got like cathedral ceilings in here. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Just, just, just mad, madman room design, okay? Yeah, a random horse lamp. His book has a Kelpie on it for some reason? I guess they didn't want to hear the story about how I met Holy Mackerel. Oh! Those foolish children! Oh no! What? Grandpa! Oh no, are they going to kill the grandpa character so that he never gets to tell them the story before he dies because iPad bad? 30 years ago.
30 years ago, I was a guy who looks nothing like me, is, is actually taller than me, has a completely different build and different eye color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's incredible. Also, this is supposed to be taking place in 2015. No, in, four, in 2045, I mean. Why did I say 2015? What is wrong with my brain? I was laughing too. I, I meant to say 2045. <laughs> I don't know why I said 2015. <laughs> I got smacked. I got smacked by the Mac too hard. <sighs> Ow. <laughs> why is... <laughs> why is he... Why is the... <sighs> okay, I love this. I love this so much. I love that the grandpa in 2015 is driving like a 19 fucking 60s rusted out truck for some reason. What is wrong with this? And he's carrying like a tin lunchbox. Oh, it's a Twin Peaks lunchbox too. Nice. Well memed, good sir. Okay, I gotta, I gotta compliment Charlie. Absolutely bold move to go for the Jesse Gemstone look. He must have been watching the Righteous Gemstones. At, like literally, those fucking sideburns are straight out of G fucking Righteous Gemstones. Kind of wise guy are you? <gasps> no, they're doing the they're doing the subtitles again. Oh, this is weird. The subtitles for Holy Mac is a weird change. I'm the wise. Wait. Also, hold on a second. We can see in the mask. Hold wise on. Wise guy are you? Hold on. Hold on. We can see in the mask. There's facial hair in there. I'm the one. You. I'm the wise guy. It's him. Is Charlie, has Charlie been the Holy Mac all along? But the Holy Mac is taller than Charlie, right? And also, oh, it's, a, it's gotta be somebody changed. They must've changed in the suit. Are these shot at different times? Okay, they are standing really far away from each other, but he does actually slap it out. So then who else could it be? Okay, yeah, but in this shot, it could be somebody else in the suit. Also, look at Holy Mac in the first shot, okay? Hold on, not to do this, but Holy Mac in the first shot, let's just say Holy Mac in the first shot's a bit chunkier, okay? Like this guy's a bit, little bit more rotund, okay? Look, Charlie, uh, uh, Holy Mac is looking a little bit, um, he's looking a little lean here. So... But who's who's here in the close-up? We got somebody with facial hair, it looks like. Or else very, very bushy, long hair. I'm the wise guy. That was my lunch. <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot. It's Friday of Lent. What are you, the meatless Friday police? Oh, how convenient. You got a job two days ago as a cannon what? 1251. Hmm. In a former, in an old episode of Holy Mac, we all would have known exactly what he was saying. When he does his little hand numbers, we know exactly what he's saying. We know it. We don't well, need the subtitles. We speak his language. You caught me. I was trying to eat a ham sandwich on a Friday, okay? Good for you, you stopped me. Now, can you leave me alone? I'm trying to enjoy my escape. 
I don't know if you have a family, but sometimes a dad needs a little escape. Some peace and quiet, you know? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> yeah, so I spend I spend lots of time with my family. Yeah. Uh oh. Lot. Yeah. I spend time. You know, I, I chariot Metal Gear Solid rules. Straight up, it's Metal Gear Solid rules. <sighs> What do you mean, WMDs? Weapons of mass destruction, Snake. Weapons of mass destruction. That type of thing. He seems to be a cyborg ninja, Snake. <sighs> cyborg ninja? You mean, yes, cyborg ninja. I can't believe it. I work a lot. You know, long, long shifts. And I have, I have hobbies, you know, like working on the 48 Chevy here. Wow, that's a pretty good snake. Thank you. Thank you. I've been working on it forever. I've also been playing a ton of Metal Gear Solid recently. Wasn't the guy's name literally just Cyborg Ninja? Actually, it was, it was actually just Ninja. In the, uh, in the, like, documents... I mean, he, they call him a cyborg ninja, but in like the achievements that you get um, on, the mo on the new game and in the old script, he's just called Ninja, which is kind of funny. <laughs> of course I do. What self-respecting dad doesn't watch football? Yeah, the weekends. Uh... Okay, this is just depressing. I have poker night on Saturday with the guys. I do go to mass on Sunday with my family. <sighs> the minimum. I escape too much. What do you think I'm an escape artist? I'll tell you what. I told you, Metal Gear Solid Logic, he repeats everything. I'll make a deal with you. Oh, look, look at this, hold on, notice this? Notice the way, okay, I'm not trying to do a Mac investigation here, but look at how the Mac is standing here versus how it stands when it cuts away. Yeah, the weekends, uh... Saturday. Now watch, fam. so here's what he looks yeah, like here, and now look at how he's standing here. This Mac is way different. Totally different. Normal Mac, the holy Mac that is talking to him is is posture mogging the the this this Mac here. What the hell's going on here? Palminator with the tier one sub, thank you so much. In the year 4015, Woblox will lead the great ma mackerel rebellion against the Friday Meat Masters. True, Palminator. True, true. That Mac is the old guy? No way. No way. Old guy wouldn't dress up as Mac, would he? I'll give up my hobbies for Lent. And you, kindly leave me alone. Wait, what was stuck on the side of his face there? Oh, nothing, it was just this. Kindly, leave me alone. You could be right, Varnish Eater. Well, there's gotta be a camera person, right? So maybe they have for the easy shots they I don't know. You were right. Hello saliva. Welcome. You've come in such a wonderful time. You've come in such a blessing of a time. Let your mind be opened to the holy mackerel. Let his fins and his marine glory Fill the wrinkles of your brain. I gave up those things for Lent. 
and uh, I think saved my family. Thank you. By the way, I uh, didn't get your name last time. Holy mackerel. I'm Mark. Don't ever lose passion of your vocation. Well, it's good uh, meeting you again and... Uh... Yeah, look at this. This is not our normal Mac. This is not our normal Holy Mac at all. Look, the suit barely fits him. They got, we have an imposter. We have a real imposter. Oh, sorry about that. The bot's a little sensitive sometimes. All right, there you go. I gotta go uh, spend Good Friday with the family. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel, one day I'll tell your story to my grandkids. This episode still has three and a half more minutes in it. That means they got a twist coming for us. Been there. Probably most of the story. <laughs> oh, the brilliant subversion! They really were only gonna finish their match in their video game, and then they came to hear the story anyway. Honestly, flashbacks are hit or miss. Sometimes they're good, but oftentimes they're just sloppy and it's not even worth having them in there. Yeah. They're filled with inconsistencies mm -hmm. and I just don't think they really add anything to the story. It's just usually lazy writing, so. What you got there, Charlie? Oh, uh, macaroni from the Vega market. It's really, uh, looks really good. It's meat. That's Charlie, meat. there's meat sauce I, all over that. I, I didn't notice. Um, I mean, you can save it for later. I could. I was really hungry, though. Um, and I've been really good all Lent. I haven't... Charlie. ...cheated. It's Canon 1251. No meat on Fridays. You can't eat that. Finish the race. Don't eat it. What's the deal with the Vega market? It's like the, it's like the market that's attached to their building or across the street from their building. So they mention it all the time because they probably go there constantly. And the guy seems to, the person who runs the Vega Mart, I don't know if it's like a part, if it's like actually owned by the church, but he seems to be very friendly to the church, so. <laughs> yes! Can I get some of those pretzels? Oh, look at that! Grandpa is played by Charlie's dad. That makes so much sense.
Because Charlie is Charlie Hornbacker, and Mark has got to be his dad. It's got to be his. It's got to be his dad. Dude, don't talk. So that's why he played. He played the young version of his dad. That's fantastic. Good pretzels, aren't they? Those are the best ones. Yeah. Well, you didn't eat any meat. There's that. These are good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Not what I would have expected for a season finale. Do we have one more? Do we have one more in us? I think I have enough energy to do at least one more. Gayfesh. Gayfesh, do you want to hop on Discord? All my viewers, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the show. Well, not to the chat. What is wrong with my brain tonight? It, I swear, it's it's the holiday malaise. See, there hasn't been enough <laughs> there hasn't been enough holiday cheer, and it's ruined my mood. Okay, so you can see this, right? I it's can all, see it's it. All good. All right, man, we're yeah, like it's all good. We're, I'm like qu quadra quadruplex streaming now. All right, <laughs> this is it, everybody. This is it. Gay Fesh, welcome to the show to do the holy mackerel Star Mac Prime Rib Directive episode. I have I hope, to. It's I Star Trek. Ready. You've got to have me in here for this one. Of course. That's why you're here. Of course. Great recommendation. Danny Fallen says, I'm falling asleep. This episode better be a banger. I'm not going to lie. The last two episodes were, were, they were funny and I enjoyed them, but they were low key Mac episodes and they've been putting out some stunners for a while. It seemed like they were ramping up. Maybe they were ramping up for season nine. And also it does seem like, um, the new writer is taking a bigger hand in these episodes. The Sean guy, who uh, they they kind of set him up in the in the internal story as the new writer guy. So, and he's the guy who likes to do even more heavy-handed like movie adaptations. So maybe he was just finding his footing. So, do you think they're going to have like deep cuts in Star Trek, or do you think they have a very surface level knowledge of of the franchise? Like, are, are there is is it just going to be stuff like where people assume, oh, well, it's Star Trek, so that means James Kirk sleeps with everyone, which is like the J.J. Abrams understanding of who Kirk is. Versus, or do you think they're going to be like genuine fans? Um. I feel like they're going to be genuine fans, but I don't know how many of those they'll write in. I mean, they. With their other stuff, they've been, they've gone so far. Oh man, that looks so good. I just got delivered food. Oh my God, that's incredible. That looks actually amazing. Um, actually, can you put this over? I don't want to forget it. All right, I'll leave it there. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, I They've always been legit fans about the stuff that they've put in there. Although I don't know how deep they've ever gone in any of their references. Like the Minecraft references were like the nether portal, which is fairly, you know, I mean, it's not a deep cut, but it's not, it's not like super surface level. The 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 One Punch Man really surface, and of course the 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 Metal Gear Solid stuff has always been fairly surface level stuff, like stuff that most people know about it, like you know, you know, Punished Snake and all that. But um, I don't know. What do you think about the What do you think about the cover art here? What do you think it's given? Uh, well, okay, so that is um a pretty like generic movie poster star trek thing like you know uh, you get you always get the transporter effects and it's got the uh the primary division colors yeah. um but like it doesn't scream like a specific star trek to me it could be that they're going for like the jj abrams 2009 star trek movie um but i i genuinely have no idea i'm very curious the fact that they made the prime rib directive joke though at least somebody here knows what the prime directive is yeah i mean so. i don't think they would i don't think they would do something they didn't actually like they've always been pretty like they've always seemed to be pretty honest in their inspirations like i mean even the like 
I don't know. Like even the 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 like joke where they deliberately avoid saying Metal Gear Solid. Like they're like they're like Nick, you what are you going for the Nick Fury when he's doing the snake voice? And he's like, oh, I thought I was Dan Crenshaw. Like that that you know that that seems to me to be like fairly self aware. But okay. all right, let's do it. Let's do the Star Mac Prime Rib Directive without any further ado. All right, everybody, let's do this. Video, the final medium. These are the productions of the Mother Angelica control room. It's con Oh. Okay, not a bad Star Trek parody music so far. They True. probably didn't make it themselves. They probably got somebody else to have, like, a public domain Star Trek parody music. Yeah, true. <laughs> the Mother Angelica control room. Oh, my God. <laughs> Continuing mission to expose lies and falsehoods to boldly record shows that will get us canceled. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that is a weird joke to make about about Holy Mac, the least cancelable thing they've ever done. <laughs> Wait! That's an adaptation of the Holy Mac theme in weird Star Trek dinging. Oh shit, so they actually wrote it. Alright, nice. I appreciate that. Director's log. Tracking ID. Vort-2023-02-24. Vors has written an episode of the Vortex and is ready to record. Graphics have been produced and uploaded to the network. Just as we were preparing for a single take show so we can stay on schedule, the Holy Mackerel sent around a memo. Oh, General Order One, dear weird air breathing friends, effective immediately if you are- What was that? The, the sound effects, it's, that's the bridge of the uh, the uh, Enterprise on The Next Generation. Ah, uh, see, I told you. I knew. Even if they only did shallow references, I don't think they would ever do something they weren't actually a fan of. I believe in them that much. ...are privy to a potential meat-eater during any Friday this Lenten season. You must interfere. This will be known as the Interference Directive. God bless. Holy mackerel. Canon 1251 Enforcer. Weird audio cut. Yeah. Director, Boris is on set. On screen. David, status report. I'm micing up Boris. I need his audio operational, now. This will take me at least three minutes, Director. You got one. You can't change God's laws of physics. Is prompter ready, number two? Prompter is loaded and ready. Emily, do we have cars? I'm picking up a strange signal. Sounds like gospel music. Must be that radio tower on Woodward Heights. Isolate and capture noise print. Got it. So far, this is really good, actually. Hey, souls. Got the camera set and shot. Good work, Sean. I seem to have worked a miracle. The loud mic is operational. Good work, Dave. I know I can count on you. Call quiet. Quiet in our special Fulton J. Sheen studio. We are shooting the vortex. Speed. Engage. I mean, uh, action. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and faulty okay. trapped and exposed. Everything sounding good, Vortex, looking good. JP, ready OTS 01. Graphic cued. On my command. Athletics and the competition and sports and that sort of Director. thing. Director. So, it you know, appears that Voris seems to have gone off script. I see well, that. What's he doing? He seems to be comparing aspects of football to Catholicism. Unorthodox. Yet logical. Now, the, uh, I like they got the guy with the dopey are, ears to play uh, Spock. Not making any <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the Spock pick is a perfect call. Well, these are a lot, of new, a, lot of new, a lot of new people in this episode. We got a well, lot of it's a newcomers. New, new crew of interns for the new season, I guess. Yeah, probably. We I we we'd have to get the dates between when the last episode of season eight was to the first episode of season nine. Sense. Mm -hmm. We need to cut the record and start from the top. Boris has given clear instruction to never stop a show unless a sufficient error, mistake, or goof were to occur. Who asked you to green blooded hobgoblin? <laughs> Agreed. Unless there's a technical error, we gotta wait till he just gets back on script. Everyone be ready. Launch it into the air. That's like the spirit. I'm hearing a faint sizzling sound being picked up by the mic. Does it warrant cutting the record? <laughs> oh, no. Negative. I'm isolating frequency. Wait. Do you just say sizzling sound? Yes. 
JP, punch Jib up on preview. Notre Dame football. Why Notre Dame? Well, first of all, it's named after the mother of God. So Who would be stupid play. enough to yeah, cook during a show? But, but, but not on the field. Is that? Field doesn't have an it's just pure, oh, no. Straight up football. Dedicated Carl! Of God. Carl! Carl! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the echo. That was good. According to Holy Mackerel's directive, you must try to prevent anyone from being meat. <laughs> the best thing to do, the best thing to do when you're having audio issues, scream as loud as possible on your set. Okay, I really want to appreciate this though. Um, usually, when people are m mocking the the con scream from Wrath of Con, what they do is they prolong it. They do con. Yeah, they do and, like super long. That's n that's not how it went. It was a very short con. But then it zooms out into space and you hear yeah, it echoing. And, you get and the they echo. got the echo. So they did it right. Like they did it better than JJ Abrams did. Because JJ Abrams did the con thing. He had Spock scream con in into darkness, but he had oh, a God, God. It was so bad. And I was like, ah, fuck you, JJ Abrams. So they're doing better than JJ Abrams is right now, basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it is Lent and a Friday. Uh that's where date is number two. If we divert our attention from the Vortex to stop Carl from eating meat, we risk being up a pair for Boris in the Vortex, and who knows if he goes back on script. Oh, just try another take, man. I'll reshoot that one. person that can help us now. Oh! We gotta upgrade! He's got a pin! He's got a badge! You know, I had... I had, uh, on my last car, a, um... A Star Trek fish um, uh, uh, bumper decal, like you know the the, the Jesus fish, except uh -huh. that it's a trek inside of the fish, and at the ends of the fish tails were like uh, nacelles. So like with the the whole shape of it, it looked like a uh, um, uh, a Star Trek ship. Oh, and, that's and so cool! That's not what this is, but it would have been cool if they had got one of those and just stuck that to yeah. It's close. The Catholic mind makes distinctions. Is he inbounds or is he out? Holy mackerel. Quick, you have to stop Carl from eating. <sighs> Fine, I'll direct you. Here, take this. <laughs> That's awesome. They made these. Oh my god, they made them out of cans. Oh, the, you're right. It's, 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 it's a lid. It's a lid of like a pickle jar or a hot pepper jar. And then yeah. this is the bottom of like a can that's been cut. Oh, but it works really well, and it's got the the, the silver and gold two tone thing that the TNG badges had. This is I'm, I'm impressed. That's damn really good for, a, for a cheap prop. That is super good. Oh man, holy Mac! Nobody, nothing's like holy Mac. It's I, the emotions that I'm feeling right now watching the very last season, the last episode having been shot in April. Oh. <laughs> Just open the door. <laughs> that would be too loud. Hello? Sweet. Holy mackerel just gave me the shiny oh, badge and I can use the wrong much clear now. Go back a second when he taps the badge. Uh oh. Did they get they the, wrong the wrong one? Effect. The shiny yeah. badge and I get here. You, you have to be a Notre Dame fan or you can kiss eternal life. Hello? Yeah, no. That is the sound for a hail ending. It should be a ticka ticka. Like a. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, I can't quite do it. Obviously, I'm not a master at doing sound effects with my voice, but um, yeah, no, that that is very specifically a hailing frequencies closed sound effect. Oh, that is not a combat sound effect. Their first so fuck they up. Used the wrong one. Oh. Sweet. Holy mackerel just gave me the shiny badge, and I can hear you much clearer now. Oh. Wow. That is clear. <laughs> Holy mackerel, is that you on the jib? <laughs> oh no. Okay, Mac. I want to see. I want to say before Morris finishes his football rant, okay? Now you're controlling the jib. I want you to pan left. Swing. Zoom in a little bit. That's good. That's good. A little too much. Bring it back. Bring it back. Camera up. Jib down. No, no. Camera goes down. Jib swings up. Camera down. Jib up. Great. Okay. Now just shift a little bit to the left. Zoom it in. Good. 
uh, Wait. The sort of teamwork that's done here. You said that things got phasers? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fire phasers. <laughs> they finally got they finally got budget a budget for for uh for Adobe plugin effects. <laughs> A direct hit. Yes! Great work, Mac. Wait. Mac, are you controlling the jib? Okay, it's pointed oh, no. towards... They're gonna... Are they gonna phaser oh. for us? Red alert! Do it. Great for impact! <laughs> it crashed into the window of the director room. They say this, it's plain as day. Right there in all of script. JP! JP! No. Is there anything you could do to help him? We Dang. should have known he was wearing a red shirt. Okay, but to be they're fair, there's two guys wearing a red shirt. Okay, this might be Wait, Peach. But is he dead though, or is he going to give a Spock speech? Is he going to be, I have been and shall always be your friend? But that would be out of character. Wouldn't that be wrong because he's the wrong character? It doesn't matter. It's fine. It just, hey, if they're going to kill somebody, he's, of course, he's wearing a red shirt. But they should also do that. They, they, they got to do the Spock death speech. Come on. To be fair, I definitely thought that the red shirt of this episode was gonna be the the guy who they showed miking him up in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Varnish Eater says, "I remember this. I remember the jar lid com badges. I remember the football rant. You that you must have watched it on your own. We've never seen this episode. I've never seen this episode. We've never watched it." So you must have watched it either by yourself or there's somebody else who's sneaking this stuff and I need to find them and challenge them to a duel. I'm a cinematographer, not a doctor. Uh, you just take everything to her on one sort of last final play in this life. You just sort of pitch it up there. Director, and you throw it appears it that Voris is looking to wrap up his football analogies. It would be logical to reassign the TD position. I got it. Uh, I got it. Yeah, I got it. You know what, guys? This Ready is in OTS? Yeah. I don't know. I... Let's 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 take it from the top again. I, I, I lost my train of thought. Somewhere in here, football is about getting to heaven. I just can't remember. Hey, Voris went too far off script. We have to reset. That's it. I'll be in my ready room. I liked that. That was good. Yeah. All right. Oh, wait a minute. There's still about a minute left. Oh. They're hitting us with an end credits. Oh, what show are we on? JP, you fell unconscious for several minutes. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I <laughs> uh, he hit. He accidentally hit him with the uh, with the pinch. That's right. Is he gonna try it on her? Hey, hey. So, what's the situation with the mic? I'm actually on my lunch right now. I'm making a bean burrito <laughs> with broccoli, of course. Mm, bean burrito sounds good. Yeah, I have extra. You want one? Sure, beam me up. Beam me up. All right. Okay, all right. That one was pretty funny. All right. That one it was, was pretty legit. funny. They, I like was... how they worked it toward something that they're all used to. Like, yeah, that actually, yeah. yeah that, that, was, that was a good one. That was a good adaptation of Star Trek to their job. Yeah, and also I think it was it was it was funny that like they found an excuse to use all the fancy stuff like the jib in this in this uh in this episode which uh -huh. is like they don't ever do that. Like half of the show is like hand handheld shaky crap footage. So, I bet they're not usually allowed to use that stuff, but they found an excuse this time, which hey, that's great. It still kind of looks terrible, but <laughs> Do you think that outtake of uh, Voris going on the football rant. Do you think that was something that he did? Like, do you think he participated in this one, or do you think they just had that outtake and they worked that into their their whole like uh, uh, story thing for it? I think I think he probably participated in that that one just because like when he was do when they cut to the part of him doing the rant, it really didn't seem like his like normal ranting style. It seemed uh -huh. way more like what he usually does on these, where it's like shaky and like he's just kind of going off the cuff i mean it could be i they had they had his voice going for a long time in the background but i don't i 
couldn't catch if it was anything actually coherent. So, I don't know. It might be based on a real rant. He was literally holding a football. Yeah, but like... I mean, he's been in a couple of these episodes before. They had the one with Loan Shark, where he actually is like arguing with Loan Shark. Most of the time, he just makes small cameos, but he's had a few. And also, he was in that episode where he fires Holy Mac. He had a pretty yeah, big role in that Yeah, I know he's been one. in them before. It's just... Uh... You know, because I was noticing that really the only footage we actually have of him is him on screen. We don't get any like uh, um, other he coverage interact of with him anybody, at, really. any, any other angles of him. Like when when we're looking behind the scenes, we don't actually see him in the thing in uh, in the studio doing it. They always make sure that that part is just cropped right out. Yeah. Uh, but then maybe it's just a he was there to film that rant, but they could only get him filming the rant on the regular studio setup and didn't, you know, have a second camera rolling to get the other stuff because, you know, he's busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you think this one, you think this one lived up? Do you think it lived up as a tribute to Star Trek? Yeah. I, I feel like they did a pretty good, couple pretty really good ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really appreciated that they got the con scream right. Yeah. Nobody yeah. does the echo. Yeah. Nobody does that. It's true. And also, uh, I mean, I think they did a great job with the general soundscape of the episode. It was uh, it was not as, like, bombastic and ambitious as some of the episodes we, we saw in Season 8, but it was definitely good, and I thought it was pretty funny. I think this was a good one. I think this was a really solid Holy Mac episode. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, I, I appreciate the, uh, um, the love that went into it. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks hey, for having me on this one. Yeah. I saw there was Star Trek I had to be in for. It. I'm very happy that you came on. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I think we're actually going to do one more episode. I'm feeling one more Mac. So uh, well, thanks I will for coming pop on. back into chat for that one. So. <laughs> all uh, right. Bye for now, Gay Fesh. Everybody go check out Gay Fesh's channel, all right? It's just Gay Fesh on YouTube. Easy to find. Yep. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. Damn. Damn. Okay, that was fun. You all, all right, everybody, you all want one more episode of Holy Mac, or should I go to bed? Maybe I should just go to bed. I don't know. Do we got, does everybody got the energy for one more Holy Mac? Let's do it! The Midnight Zone, Season 9, Episode 2, Holy Mackerel, let's go! Good morning, Alex. Hello, Charles. How are you this fine morning? Good. I'm, I say, I'm, I'm quite famished. What do you say we get some Wingstop for lunch today? Wingstop? I haven't had Wingstop in ages. Yes, that sounds delightful. Oh, uh, Alex, I think we're mistaken. Today's Friday. Oh, that's right. It is, isn't it? Oh, shucks. <sighs> shucks indeed. You are looking at the Holy Mackerel, an employee of St. Michael's Media, a humble Catholic apostolate located smack dab in the middle of the most fabulous city in the United States. They're not Catholic. This holy mackerel is a fish person. <laughs> Why is he T-posing? He vigorously enforces Canon 1251 during the Lenten season, wherein he replaces his co-workers' meat with an assortment of fish and other seafood. This sort of cannibalistic behavior might be witnessed on a silver screen in a whole motion picture, or perhaps by a strung-out Floridian who lost his meds. This tale of a never-ending scrupulous barrage of admonition reaches a fever pitch for the employees of St. Mike's. Nonetheless, Holy Mackerel's dedication to inf- Yeah, exactly! Fortnite, you're right! They acknowledged it as cannibalism! Oh my god, they did it! Forcing Canon 1251 is as deep as the greatest depths of the ocean. Prepare to dine in, deep beyond the sunlight zone and even beyond the twilight zone. You have a table reserved for one in the midnight zone. Uh, hey, Holy, uh, relax, it's, uh, it's just salad. There's no meat in it. Don't worry about me, Holy. I got broccoli, see? Hey, that's
That's Broccoli Boy! That's our- that's the Emperor! He's the guy! He built the Death Broccoli! Why did he choke? Salad is good. Salad, especially like a salad like that where it's got cheese and stuff. What? What? Oh, goodness. Uh, holy mackerel. This isn't what you think. Oh, man. They had a whole crew of new people. Who are these people? They, you must be right. They must have hired a whole new wave of uh, interns. It is. This is this is something totally different. It's it's beyond anything you've ever seen. It's just an impossible creation. It's it's not meat. It's trans meat. Well, if you wanted it, all you had to do was ask. My goodness. They totally know we're watching. There's no way. Holy Mac is a transphobe? Or maybe he's not. Hold on. He regards the trans meat as real meat, which means he's not a transphobe, right? He's trans positive. And those guys, we got it! Holy cha Holy Mac is our champion! Holy Mac says trans rights! Again! Again! Oh no! Oh no! Wait a minute, we may have judged too soon! Hold on a second! Hold on a second! Channer, the first time they see trans porn, and they're like, oh, oh no, am I am I gay or am I not? Oh shit, hold on, I gotta do mathematics. <laughs> the mouthfeel? He's even gonna give us the mouthfeel? Oh my god! I told you they were on to us. There's no way. There's no fucking way. I know it. And now we find out if they hate us or if they like us. That's what we find out. Previously, we've assumed that they like us, but we'll find out if they hate us. You know, if it looks like a duck, tastes like a duck, smells like a duck, it's probably a duck. Uh. Oh my god! I can't fucking 
fucking believe it! <laughs> oh shit! I'm losing my mind over here! <laughs> Everyone, I'm gonna need it. We're gonna need some Thinky Fish. Thinky Fish colon trans. Come on, it's time. Thinky Fish, hit me with it. I need it. I need the chat full of Thinky Fish trans. That's right, that's right, that's what I'm talking about! Oh my god! <laughs> Are we truly bound by the parameters of our temporal experiences? Sight, smell, taste. Is there sin attached to the consumption of that which merely mimics the forbidden fruit? Transmeat, something we would have thought impossible just decades ago. It's a sort of invention typically confined to television shows of the psychological thriller variety. The debate of this scale is a recipe for schism the likes of which no one has ever seen. The holy mackerel now swims about aimlessly, floundering around in canon law, attempting to decipher this quandary in the midnight zone. to keep the show alive. We got some friends on the inside, motherfuckers. I cannot, I, I cannot believe it. This is, <laughs> I can't believe it. The, the direct allegory, the direct allegory is, <laughs> is literally Holy Max says trans rights. I, I can't even believe it. I am so happy we decided to watch this last episode. My God! Holy moly. Incredible. Just kidding. Holy Mackerel knows that only soy boys eat fake meat. I hope you'll be able to join us next week, where Familiar Face stops by St. Mike's after a long, arduous journey from outer space. Hold on a second, though. The ending, though. Ooh. Wait a second. Wait a second. There's some fucked up shit going on here. The narrative of the entire episode is trans meat is real. And the ending only by weird post post credits d dictatorial command does he say that only soy boys eat the fake meat. But yet he recognizes it as real meat. They can't just take it back. Do you think, do you think that Michael Voris saw it and then was like, why did you make a pro-trans episode? It is! That's what I'm saying, Fortnite. Fortnite says this is an allegory for the studio not letting them say the truth. True! And yes, he didn't put soy on the board at all. He never wrote soy on there at all. He was just trying to figure out for himself whether he considered it to be true meat or not. Oh my God. The view data here says that we're the first to watch this portion of the video. 
Wait, is that for real? Wait, how do you... Chariot says, this is like when a Bible passage says, Jesus said you should do this. And then afterwards, the person giving the sermon is like, yeah, but actually, literally, it actually is. It unironically is. The entire episode is about the holy mackerel, the canon law enforcer coming to the conclusion that trans meat is real meat. He's based all the way through. And then they have a little thing at the end where he goes, well, actually, that's not what we mean. We are the fan base. We saw, we, holy mackerel said it. They cannot control the truth. The truth of the art spoke through. The producer, uh, uh, you know, written by committee bullshit that they pinned on at the end doesn't matter. Literally doesn't mean anything. Look, it's after the credits that he says that. Based. Damn. Damn. Holy mackerel says trans rights. Wow, incredible. There's no comments on these videos anymore. We are the fan base for this. All of the all of the comments are gone. They've they all the comment sections are completely gone. It has been has it been established that the Holy Mac has Deadpool level powers and can break the fourth wall? Yes. Holy Mackerel has broken broken the fourth wall multiple times. We know. We are the viewers. They had to put that on the end there because someone up above was like, uh, this is making me uncomfortable. Here's the YouTube version. We can check the comments. Let's see. Let's see what the comments say on the YouTube version. When in doubt, fall back to the intention of the act. If the intention is to skirt canon law, then it's a violation of canon law. Remember, Fridays used to be a day of fasting, not just abstinence from meat. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> Here's a fun, super fun fact that's little known these days. In the early days of the United States, especially in areas that the Mississippi areas that the Mississippi ran through, Bieber, yes, Bieber's, like the little critters with the big tails that make little dams in the waters, was a very meat. Well, it seems that the bishops of the early Americans decided that beaver was okay to eat on Fridays. You have to remember back then, no meat on Fridays was all year long. They decided that beaver was fine to eat because it lived primarily in the water, therefore it was not meat. Lol, people who lived along the Mississippi, especially in St. Louis, heartily enjoyed roasted beaver on Fridays. In fact, up until COVID hit, there was a restaurant in the St. Louis area that served barbecued beaver during Lent. I love the beaver. <laughs> that made me laugh, okay? Trans meat. Does that mean this meat decided to identify as trans? Lol, very well done. Huh? That doesn't even make sense by that's like that's this is even dumber than most conservative comments. This is really weird. I watched a few of these. I was waiting for them to be funny, but they're not funny. Wrong! Wrong! They're just really weird. I get the core idea that it's just the execution that's kind of lame. Wrong! Oh, and now she's rambling. Oh, no. Oh, man. Ramble. Somebody got it. Saint Michael the Archangel. It's a trap! Hmm. Oh. Soy boys, not meat either. Why that comment? Wait, here's Charles Hornbacker. Wait, there's Charlie. This is Charlie. This is the guy. 
That was a phone taken for the bobblehead. I think he meant a pose taken for the bobblehead. I'm happy you find the show weird. I was going for that. If you don't find it funny, that's cool too. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Hold on, we gotta find out. He replied! He replied to the trap joke! Ow! Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! We got him! We got him! We got him! We got him, motherfuckers! He knows, and he knows what he was saying too! Holy Mac said trans rights. Holy Mac says trans rights. Holy Mac says trans rights. Oh my God. We got him. Charlie says, this one is saucy. No, no, we don't leave a comment. Nope. We're not doing it this time. They know. Hold on, look at this. You can't fool holy mackerel. Charlie says true story. Charlie, the actual creator of holy mackerel, says you can't fool holy mackerel. Holy mackerel concluded it's real meat. The only comment I want to put on here is I love this so much. This is the best episode. Oh my God, it's actually incredible. Okay, this isn't the best episode, but it's it, for me, it's the most vindicating one. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay, we'll talk about this in just a second. Hold on a second. That was the most vindicating episode of Holy Mackerel ever, and I legitimately lost my mind that Holy Mackerel said trans rights. Uh, I know for a fact that they're watching our show and this message, this message goes to the Holy Mac team. We might not see eye to eye on everything, but over here in this, in our, in our strange menagerie full of trans people and queer people, we love Holy Mac, okay? And one thing we can agree on is that even if we don't agree on all of the religious principles that you believe in, we want to see Holy Mac enforce Canon 1251 Forever, baby, forever. We love Holy Mackerel. And we respect that he respects us. And we respect him. That was legendary. If you've been enjoying this Holy Mackerel episode, make sure that you smack subscribe down below and make sure that you go watch the Holy Mac mega episode. Just search my channel, Holy Mac, on Demon Mama's channel and you'll find all of our reacts to it. And of course, we have made sure to archive Holy Mackerel to make sure it won't get lost, that it will never become lost media. We have a full archive of Holy Mac for to make sure that it doesn't get lost. That's it. And of course, I am going to reach out to try and make sure that we can preserve Holy Mac. As an addendum, this is the addendum, okay? This can be in the video. Red Top Report. Red Top Report is one of the only shows that was still being produced at Church Militant the same group that made Holy Mac. Red Top Report says, on December 1st, Gender Soul and Ronan Terrence were terminated from Church Militant. Church Militant released all intellectual property rights of Red Top Report to us. This means we can continue our mission of evangelizing generations. Oh, and not to mention a big reveal coming in 2024, which is wild. That means that basically, if they're willing to let go of the full intellectual property rights, that means they're probably clear, cleaning house completely, which uh, further follows my prediction that there is no comeback for holy, uh, for not for holy mackerel, but uh, for church militant. 
<clears throat> if they're releasing all intellectual property uh, rights to some of their shows, to the talent that ran those shows, that is not what an organization that is on solid footing is doing. That also means we have a chance at getting the IP. Yes. Um, honestly, they might not want to sell the IP to me, but I am going to offer to buy the IP regardless. Because I want Holy Mac to live on. I truly, truly, truly want Holy Mac to live on. Odds are they will probably just give it to Charlie. It might already be Charlie's, but I want to offer to buy it from Charlie if he's not going to continue making it. Yeah, don't worry. I'll be reaching out very soon. Don't you worry at all. Anyway, keep on listening for the signal. This has been Demon Mama. Make sure you press subscribe.